Welcome back to Hey Kentucky. Time to talk March Madness because it is here. So we bring in one of the best going. Sporting News' is Mike DeCourcy. Thank you so much for joining us today, Mike. Uh, amid all of the coronavirus scare that's going on, uh, I'm not sure exactly how these conference tournaments are going to play out, but let's talk about it. First of all, Kentucky, where do you see them? Um, ending up as a three seed potentially? Well, I, that certainly would probably be the easiest place to put them. Uh, it's where they would be right now, give or take. But if they if they were to win in the in Nashville, which I think they're certainly capable of doing, I, I do think that they could play as high as a number two seed. And uh, that's, you know, I think that's that and the placement, the possible placement, if if it worked out that way in Indianapolis, would be suitable goals for them to work toward when they go to the SEC tournament. That was my next question is where does the SEC tournament play? If they lose in their first game in the quarters, that could drop them to then a four seed? Yeah, I think so because when I was doing my bracket on Friday, I had 14, I had 13 terrific teams for 12 spots on the first three lines. And at that point, I left Creighton out uh, and had them on the four line and, and, and hated it because it doesn't it didn't make sense. But who else? And then they went out and won and beat Seton Hall. And Seton Hall now at the moment is the odd team out. Now, Seton Hall, Villanova and Creighton are all trafficked up in that in that range uh, of, of trying to fight for two, three, uh, the two or three line. And they all can't win uh, in, in New York in the Big East tournament. So how that plays out will have some say in where Kentucky might land. Uh, there are a lot of variables for every team in that picture. Uh, Kentucky is pretty safely in that group. You just don't want to be the one that, it, that ends up on that four line as the, as the first or second four because they're certainly capable of better. I think they've played better than that to this point. Uh, but if they were to, to fall early... In, in the SEC tournament, then that would be available to them to fall back to a four seed. So Emmanuel quickly named the league's uh, player of the year today and John Calipari named coach of the year. Uh, obviously, Cal's done a tremendous job with this team, uh, but I suspect you would agree that going forward, Ashton Higgins needs to be a part of this team for it to do something special. I don't think that Ashton has played as poorly as it's been suggested. I did a column after the, the, the victory that preceded Tennessee uh, that lifted the winning streak to eight games. And I pointed out how dominant Kentucky has been. And even if you count the, the, the Tennessee game, how dominant they've been over the final eight minutes. One exception in the final nine games to that rule of how great they've been in those final eight minutes. And one of the key components to that has been Ashton. He's had his problems with turnovers and he's not making as many shots. But at the free throw line, if you go look in the, at those eight minutes and, and in that winning streak or now eight out of nine, they make more free throws than, than is, seems humanly possible. They dominate the game by getting to the line. It's not EJ and it's not, it's not Tyrese Maxey. It is Emmanuel Quickly. It is Nick Richards and it's Ashton Hagens. Those are the guys who are getting it done. I really believe in him as a player at both ends of the floor. As I said, he's not having his best year, but I think everybody needs to relax and allow him to grow as a basketball player uh, because I still believe he's playing for Kentucky and playing for Kentucky to win. Now, let me ask you this about Cal winning the award. Um, do you think he was the best coach in the SEC this year or because the league seemed kind of down uh, that he was just the de facto coach because they won the SEC by a, a few games? Well, he did a very nice job in finding what works for this team. What did he do this time to make this team better? They changed the offense like he went to ball screens in back in 2011 and put Brandon Knight in situations to become a great player. And the different things he's a been able to do over the years to try to make the Wildcats the best they can be. In this season, it was that going to the three guard offense with Ashton on the ball, Emmanuel quickly elevated to, st to full-time starter and, and Tyrese able to do so many different things. Him changing to that and then people are complaining about those stretch drives because they do they do slow down and they do play a, a more controlled brand of basketball. But I think he understood that that was the thing that was going to win games. And as I said, over those final eight minutes, of course, Sunday Saturday was a little different 
uh, because they had to come from behind. But I think the composure of understanding, this is what we need to do to win. And, and we can, and we know we can win in those final eight minutes. I think that played into why they're able to win at Florida on Saturday. So he's done a really great job with that. Coaches who had the kinds of teams that maybe should have been tournament contenders or clear entrance to the tournament, to the NCAAs at this point, didn't happen for a lot of teams. It's never a wrong choice to pick the guy who was inventive and created cohesion in his team and ended up winning the conference championship by a significant margin. Real quick, Mike, where do you see this team going in March? Well, a lot of that has to do with who they play and where they play. But I think they're dangerous. I, I still think they have a lot of better basketball out there to them. They struggle a little bit to make shots. And that, you know, they're reliant very much on Emmanuel in that department. And that slows their offense down. And then defensively, because they play the three guards, the three point guards, basically, they're not exceptional on the perimeter defensively. Ashton's very good against the ball, but they don't have the kinds of, uh, of long, uh, lean athletes on the outside like Marcus Garrett uh, and uh, Abaji for, for Kansas that make it difficult to see into the lane and difficult to get the ball there or difficult to throw the ball into the post. You can do that against Kentucky's guys, and that's why it's been hard for them to build big leads. So Kentucky has to be able to play well in competitive games. You play a lot of close games in the NCAA tournament. They know how to win in those games. So I do think they can excel in March, but it'll be a lot of close calls and a lot of tough nights and tough days for Kentucky fans. Mike DeCourcy, thank you so much for your expertise. We really appreciate having you on. Happy to do it. Thank you. Check him out at TSN Mike. All right, much more Hey Kentucky right after this.